game. If you're looking at this game, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the fact that Jake Odorizzi pitched the deepest he's deep, uh, pitched with the Houston Astros? Or how about Jordan Alvarez hitting a moonshot and then Jeremy Pena literally hitting the moon? There's so much to discuss about. I'm still waiting for Brett to get on, but he's almost there. And we're going to talk about a lot more on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast that starts now. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, you can find him at H Town Wheelhouse, or you can find him at the game. He was wearing his awesome little Space um, City uh, jersey today, and the Astros played like they're from outer space. They played uh, like, who is this Jake Odorizzi guy? Is he going to win the Cy Young Award this year? I don't know. He was playing really good. This is a totally different guy from the the one who pitched in the first uh, three games where he had a nine ERA. He, this is a different. We'll talk about how good he's pitched. But uh, then you had that. Like I said, you had the offense come alive. Still only eight hits. They did strand 16 runners on base. What was frustrating a little bit was that they loaded the bases for Yuli Gurriel. I believe that was in the fifth or uh, fifth inning, I believe is what it was. They walked Alvarez and then Yuli came up and then Yuli got out. And that could have been an inning that you're looking back on if the Astros would have lost that game, been like, what the heck, Astros? Why do you keep on stranding all these runners on base? But uh, then thankfully, the rookie. The rookie who was 0 for 11 in his last uh, the previous at bats, and but he comes through in clutch situations. And after the game, Dusty Baker says, "Well, uh, he's developing a reputation for being a clutch hitter, and he uh, once he feels confidence in those uh, clutch situations, he's going to just continue to grow as a player." And so we'll see uh, what happens there. So uh, definitely in the situation uh, today's game. The main focus I want to start this show off with uh, while Brett's joining in is the fact that um, we're going to go ahead and focus a little bit on Jake Odorizzi. I know I am I kind of made the thumbnail be side Jake Odorizzi. I was kidding a little bit with that. But this is the uh, – he threw six and two-thirds scoreless innings, allowed four singles. It's his longest outing since holding the Tigers to one hit in seven innings in May of 2019, not with the Houston Astros. And he he's allowed one run in the last 12 and two-thirds innings. His ERA has gone from nine to a respectable 4.15 ERA. If I remember correctly, that's what he finished the season with last year. So Jake Odorizzi, I don't think he's going to pitch shutout ball the rest of the season. But this is a whole different cat. This is a guy that's pissed off with everything, and he's ready to take the American League by storm. Wow, what a game, Eric. Let me tell you, being there in person and seeing that, thanks for getting started off um, on time and not letting me delay you. Jay Roberts, thank you for the seat. I appreciate it. Uh, dude, this game, um, I'll get to the fan interaction later, but Jake Odorizzi deserves – all the praise. And let me tell you something. I was actually talking with a friend um, through Twitter, as I always do, and a guy named Mark White, who uh, who writes and does like different things. And he talked about the importance of Jason Castro coming here and how Castro actually helped talk Jake Odorizzi into coming and how the Astros knew that signing him, it was a little bit of a high risk, high reward type of signing. And it's starting to fall into place and come into fruition. And this team, when their pitchers pitch shutout ball, they don't need a ton of runs. Um, this is something that's interesting. The Astros and the Blue Jays are, Blue Jays are one, Astros are two, and the percent of runs scored by a team via the home run ball. The Astros and the Blue Jays hit more home runs, and their home runs are more responsible for more runs per game than any other team in Major League Baseball. And when this team starts hitting as a whole, Eric, mm -hmm. 
the league has got to watch out because that negative run differential, don't let it fool you. It's going to go away, and in May, it's going to evaporate. Jake Odorizzi went out and absolutely shoved. I love the title that you put on there because he deserves it. Because we were going after him. Everybody in Astros Nation was lacking confidence in him. But like I've said before, these players, when they don't play well, Eric, they're more upset than we are. Okay. We could never be as upset as they are when they don't do well. And I've been one of his biggest critics. I've been one of the people that have been like, I don't know. I started turning the corner. And then tonight with the Space City jerseys, I was like, let's go. We got to turn your luck around from the first Space City start. And he looked really good out there, Eric. He threw one hell of a game. Good job. He deserves it. I mean, this is a guy who his last time he pitched in the Space City uniform, he was literally booed off the field. Yeah, he didn't he, he give lasted, up like yeah, he lasted one third of an inning. He one gave third. up he gave up like four five, six runs. I don't remember exactly. I think it was six was. runs total. Like it was yeah. it was I think six I think all six of them were like charged to him. But yeah, that was but he was motivated. And see, that's what great athletes do that's what athletes do on great teams and you may not think jay i'm not saying jake odorizzi is the elite pitcher in the league but he's a professional for a reason the astros signed him for a reason and at some point yeah i've got to tamp down my criticism when a guy does really bad and, and jump on him and again and you've heard me say this I always say this with a caveat. If I criticize a player, I don't ever say that because I feel like I could have done better. But man, the energy was there tonight. The people were into it. I mean, you know, the Astros only scored three runs, but the three runs they scored were absolutely electric. That Jordan Alvarez home run was an absolute laser. But all credit, I think Jake Odorizzi gets the player of the game. Yeah, I know that a lot of people voted for Jeremy Pena in the Astros poll. Uh, they did a poll, but Jake Odorizzi, if it wasn't for him, yeah, great that Pena. I mean, that was a blast. We need to talk about that in a second. But Jake Odorizzi held um, the Mariners back. The Mariners are a good team. They've got some. They've got some struggling bats, but they do have some good bats in general. But looking at uh, the defense, the defense kind of saved Jake Odorizzi a little bit a couple times today. And then I know uh, Martin Maldonado threw out a runner and a double play here or there, but uh, like it, it goes on both sides. Like the Astros stranded, uh, they they got some um, bad outs and when they're hitting yeah, too. So. They left they left a lot of runners on early. We I thought that it was going to be another game like in Toronto where they only scored one or two runs, ended up losing by one because they left a lot of runners on base. They left um, Guriel had five runners himself left on base even though he got the one hit um you only had two astros with multi hits with brantley and tucker but it was enough um you know you talk about these bats in seattle eric um ty francis two for four today hitting 341 on the season jp crawford was one for two with a strikeout and a walk he's hitting 375 i mean he has found his power stroke jake odorizzi is lucky or thankful that J.P. Crawford didn't find that right field wall because J.P. Crawford is absolutely hitting bombs this year. He didn't have power last year, and he was really one that they had really been counting on. And there was a lot of doubt about J.P. Crawford, not necessarily doubt as he was done, but they were like, where's the J.P. Crawford we knew he was when he got rookie of the year, right? Right. He's back. 375, him and Ty France are the top two players on that team right now. And the Astros basically, they basically muted them tonight. Yeah. So yeah, we can look at that in, in a second, like or maybe later on, can they maintain that? Uh, that's the problem. They that you can go through streaks and everything, but you what that's crazy about the Astros that when uh, scoring four or more runs this year, the Astros are eight and zero. When yeah. the Astros are scoring uh, three or fewer runs, they are four and eleven, and that's including today's um so game. so that was a good thing so so that's the thing and i was talking to someone at the game tonight at, i forget who it was but i said you know those two games in toronto eric where they lost by one run mm -hmm. those are the games that they should win even right. though it's toronto 
Yeah. And I know those are close games. And uh, those are the games last year that the Mariners kept on winning because they were lucky games. And uh, they have a good bullpen, like with Kendall Graveman. And like, uh, that's something good. Uh, that's something good to put on your LinkedIn profile. So let's talk exactly. about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn with spring in the air, it's a time for renewal and growth personally and professionally. As your small business grows, LinkedIn jobs is here to make it easier to find people you want to talk to faster and for free. Look, I've, I've used LinkedIn for years. I remember when we moved out of state and I didn't really know anybody. LinkedIn was my go-to place to find people that were looking for those that had job skills like me. And if you are looking for someone to hire, you can create a job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so that your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize how you who you would like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So this is what you need to do. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers list visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. I know that you bet in on Jeremy Pena winning rookie of the year this year. He's putting up some good numbers. I wonder what the odds are now. Well, you know, I don't know, but they look pretty good to me. I know I put money down on them, and so that was a personal thing I did. I was going to vote on Rookie of the Year whether the Astros made it out of the ALCS. So I've got numbers on that. You know, here's the thing. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and um, sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, the start of the Major League Baseball season, heck, the NFL training camps around the corner, what free agents are going to sign where, and who's going to take each division this year in the NFL. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right. So, Jake Odorizzi had a little bit to say about the crowd today. You want to hear it? He said, It's nice to come back and have a good overall win. I think the fans really got behind that and enjoyed some good baseball. It's better than getting booed. So that's a win. <laughs> Just trying to do my job. There you go. You know, here's the thing. Player, players here, you know, players all the time will say, well, I tune out the crowd. They hear it. Um, the mind game with other players is you try to let them know that, yeah, your fans didn't bother me when they were booing me. But I think it bothered Jake Odorizzi in that he knew that he was not thrilled with the way he was pitching. He knew he could do better. He was an all-star in 2019. So this guy isn't some like fly-by-night, one-hit right. wonder Johnny on the mound. I mean, he has a proven track record. The problem was the injuries in 2020, um, 2021. I mean, 2020 was a shortened season. 2021, he didn't get to pitch much. And so we didn't know what person we were signing. Well, we're getting the guy that they – counted on him to be we're getting the guy that jason castro who was a battery mate of his in minnesota said hey we need to come sign with houston we got a good thing going here yeah also he said about jeremy pena he said he came into the role his way he didn't try to be somebody he wasn't we knew how phenomenal he was with the glove obviously he's got tremendous power he's got big shoes to fill coming in after carlos but he's done it the right way and that's what Jake Odorizzi had to say about Jeremy Pena. And so with that, let's go and talk about Mr. Jeremy Pena. That was a uh, prodigious blast. I can't even say the word. You said prodi like, prodigious. Look at you breaking out the lexicon. Wow. That was well, impressive. But that was a big blast. That was a moonshot. Whatever you want to say, that was yeah, that was a big shot. It was all the way to the, what was it, 1986 ALC? No, um, it was one of the... It was one of the well, I didn't see which flag it hit because I was in left field St. Arnold's hanging out, meeting people. But it was 422 feet. It was 106.2 miles an hour off the bat. Right. It was an absolute blast. I mean, this kid, like earlier, he had an at-bat before this one where he hit the ball straight up. And I said, it looks like he's trying to hit a home run. Well, 
he accomplished he accomplished his mission in his final at bat when he hit the ball i saw the ball leave the bat i was like i was like i hope he didn't pop up and the second the ball started flying you knew you're like okay i don't know like we we thought it went on on the train tracks we couldn't see it because where we were standing but oh my gosh it was an absolute laser it was electric and i was like you know what the astros got this there's no way they're giving up this lead well, um, the bullpen is um, not the best at times, but uh, I know that uh, some people want us to talk about why you had Naris come in in eighth inning and then you have Montero come in in ninth inning. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, like I said in the pre the pre intro, that this broke a 0 for 11 streak for Pena. And it seems like he tends to rise in those big moments. And Dusty Baker kind of said after the game that this kid is a clutch hitter. He's kind of developing the confidence to be that clutch hitter. We saw him with that walk-off uh, home run, and Breaking Tea even came out with a shirt that says uh, Pena Party. And if yeah. you go to breakingtea.com slash talking strows, you can go get yours. And it, it's just awesome how he's just getting this confidence to – just he's not trying to be somebody he's not. He's just playing it within himself. Would you like him to make some more contact? Yeah, but he didn't strike out today. So he's making contact. Would you like him to make more hunt contact? Sure. But overall, I mean, let's uh if you look at what he's doing, he's still having great exit velocity overall. So I'm not too worried about this kid. He's gonna he had um, his home run was 106.2 yeah. um, miles per hour off the bat. His expected batting average, uh, you ready for this? Yeah. It was not quite a thousand, but it was <laughs> 900, 980. So I don't see. Okay. How is a shot? Hold on. Hold on. I've got a bone to pick with the Saber Metrics guys. How is that not 1,000? Like, who's going to catch that, Eric? Well, you can't who, have Inspector Gadget. Go, go, Gadget Arms. But who, who's going to catch that ball? That's – come on. Okay, that's that's where the metrics get a little cuckoo to me. Um, Jay, who I, who I went to the game with, um, he graciously uh, let me um, sit with him. Great seats. Uh, thanks again, Jay. But – he was like, he was asking me, like, can can you break down these these uh, metrics? And so I was trying to explain them, and I realized in my trying to explain them, like this is hard math, Eric. Like you're the mathematician. I'm looking at these uh, equations to figure out these Wobacon and X Woba. It's absolutely brain splitting stuff, and so it's it's just one of those things. Um, you know, I you know we. We appreciate it. Um, Sevki. Sevki says we're doing a great job. Hey, Eric, I, I just want to say this. A side note. Tonight, I met a ton. I am well, I say a ton. I met several people who listen to the show. I had two or three people walk up to me and say, hey, are you H.T. Wheelhouse? Hey, where's Eric? Literally every person. Where's Eric? It's like, well, we're not attached to the hip, believe it or not. We actually do the show from different locations. Um, I told them you you had some obligations that you couldn't be at the game, that you'd probably be at a game soon. So, hey, you got to get to a game because they're looking for you. But I appreciate when y'all come up to us and you say something about the show. Even, I mean, when you give us a compliment, like, it means a lot. Like, we really put our heart and our soul into this. And it's because you guys, um, you guys and gals, like, you give us a support, you give us a love. And so it just means a lot. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart tonight. I always have a blast and it's even more fun whenever um, whenever we get to meet you guys because it's humbling and it's also invigorating. Thank you. All righty. Yeah, you got a lot of good pictures there. And uh, did you get the ring? They were giving away a ring. I did. Right? I did get the ring. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show it to you on camera. Hold on. Okay. All right. So while he's doing that, Yuli Gurriel um, got a double today. And so I know he came up in that bases loaded situation and maybe he should, he should have done a little bit better, but uh, this is a guy the Astros need to really step up, but he had a, a double that was 95.9 miles per hour off the bat, but he's still struggling a little bit, but you know, who's not struggling right now. Jordan Alvarez, he has uh, three home runs in the last four games. This this kid is hitting moonshots left and right, and he looks confident. He was kind of going around the bases kind of with that swag, that like, yeah, I can do anything. That's kind of like Bregman used to be. He, he had that swag, and Bregman really needs that. I mean, I know Bregman's playing a little bit better this year, but Bregman needs that swag back. So. He he does. And, you know, Bregman's going to come around. Bregman does. He does walk up there. I love how he hits his bat to his back. 
Um, but, you know, how can you not have swag with this ring? You know what? You know who doesn't have an ALCS ring since uh, since 2009? <laughs> New York Yankees. <laughs> you know, we have got, like, the, these rings are great. I actually didn't get one of the errors. I was kind of hoping to get one. It says Guriel, and it says the right number. I didn't get, like, a Guriel with Altuve on the side or something. But these rings are actually really good. It was sponsored by Gallery Furniture, Mattress Mac. Good job, bud. Came with a little case here. And so I'll display that behind me with all my other rings. So that was really cool that I got that. It's just a just a really good giveaway on Mondays, Eric. That's what they're doing. Um, yeah. And hey, we didn't mention this last time. The Astros have sent us things that they gave away last year: some bobbleheads, some hats, a couple of rings. So we, Eric and I, haven't met together on how we're going to give those out, but we're going to be doing some giveaways throughout the season. And thank you to the Houston Astros promotion team for sending those to us so that we can get our fans some things. We may ask for a little bit of shipping help on some of them, but nonetheless, we could even meet you all at a game if we're at a game together and hand those off to you. But we've got those to give away soon. Yeah, definitely. And so uh, when we get back, we're going to talk about some roster moves because there's some roster moves before this game and a little – Little guy was back in the lineup, and it was good to see him back because the Astros a little need <laughs> a little guy like he's some kid. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about uh, how he got from uh, Sugarland to the Minute Maid Park. He needed the right parts for his car. So well, let's talk about Rock Auto. Yeah, exactly. So his car was probably working. Why? Because he went to rockauto.com. With the increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible to go to your local chain and all your auto parts. Here's the thing. Even Jose Altuve, if he goes to an auto parts store, they're going to upcharge him. Why? Not because he's Jose Altuve, because he's not a mechanic. Well, are you a mechanic? Probably not. That's okay. Rock Auto has you covered. They've been owned by a family for 20 years. They have great things. Why would you pay 30, 50, sometimes 100% more for the same parts? And go to a chain store and then have to drive somewhere to get those parts when rockauto.com will deliver them to your doorstep. That's right. They have everything you need, brake pads, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. I mean, if you have that and you got one of those Scooby-Doo vans, grab, grab some carpet. We encourage you to discover all the things that they have, wiper blades, anything simple like that. So this is what I want you to do. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car truck. Now, wait, wait till the show is over, then go look, right, locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Fox, so that they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All righty, guys. Thank you for making the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen. Why don't you check out the Locked On Now podcast? They do a great job of putting all the locked on nows from the different podcasts that talk about the great sport of baseball. And it's a good way to just in 15 minutes, just to get to see what the heck happened with the Rangers. If you care, what the heck happened with the angels, what did Shohei Itani do? So it's just a good way of just knowing what's going around the sport of baseball without having to look at your phone. You can just hear what happened with all the excitement or all the disappointment in the, uh, the podcasters voices. So go check out the lock. Locked on Now podcast and just make them your second listen. So let's go and talk about some of the news and uh, notes. So some triple A second baseman uh, was called up today. I think this was his um, uh, not major league debut, but um, no. uh, <laughs> I think he's played a few games before. I think he maybe won an MVP over um, some judge dude. Um, yeah, Aaron, Aaron, judge, Aaron judge before he, fi before he fixed his teeth. Pre, oh, pre before okay surgery. yeah 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 and i know he's been accused of um doing this and okay okay come on now come on now. <laughs> all right no. so jose altuve is back on the roster and the astros also had to trim the roster down to 26 players and yesterday i i predicted that a uh, parker um Muskin, yeah i can't say his name muskinski would be sent down but it's actually um uh, they went ahead and ronel uh blanco was sent down instead but it was um the other two we did get right. Uh, it was um, who? Seth Martinez and Seth Martinez and 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 JJ Medicevic. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so so good job on that, Eric. Calling those guys. Um, Ronel Blanco just he he needs to work on some stuff. He's just he was not cutting it. He just was not getting it done. 
Um, you just wonder how long a guy like that's going to last. Martinez is, I mean, he's going to be up and down, I think, all year. I'm wondering when when, when uh, Pete Solomon's going to get a chance. Because I remember, you know, they're really high on him, and he's got some really good stuff. Sean Dubin, who we will have on the show here soon in the near future um, with, with the Space Cowboys, is doing a phenomenal job. Um, so it's... It's just, I think the time is right whenever each kid comes up, each kid that gets called up, it will be just for a game or two here. Um, But they're going to call up the right guys in the right spot. Ronel Blanco, you won't see him again until they feel like he's ready. He had a lot of promise and a lot of of high hopes coming out of camp, and he just hasn't produced. So they can't afford right now with not hitting a ton of baseballs, um, except like getting runs, except hitting them out of the park they need their pitchers to be more in tune. So that's why it was more important tonight for their pitchers to do well. And you, you asked about Montero earlier. Okay. I don't know what the matchups are or the numbers. I just don't have that in front of me. I was at the game. I didn't have time to study up before the show, but I'm assuming that they, that they flipped that Nary's matchups and Montero totally matchups and Baker addressed it after the game. Okay. Okay. Do you, do you yeah. have that? Because I haven't heard. I mean, I don't have the exact quotes, but I mean, I don't have it word for word. Okay. But I, I was watching the uh, press conference and he basically said, uh, yes, um, we I've done it both ways. Because I might ask him, well, why didn't you have Naris come in in the ninth inning and you have Montero come in in the eighth inning? Because Montero seemed to struggle a little bit um, with his command a little bit. Luckily he got the double play to end the game. So they're asked, they're questioning him. Well, why didn't you, why did you kind of do it this way? And he said, well, uh, the matchups just kind of seem to determine that we have Naris come in, in this game. And Naris has actually been used more than any reliever in baseball. If you believe it, I, I believe I saw that he's, he, this kid has, uh, he's not getting more, but this guy is just being, uh, he's becoming the Astros most dependable, reliever and the dusty just felt in that situation he needs to pitch the eighth inning not the ninth inning and then isn't it so ironic that the mariners reject got a save against him and the mariners reject and montero is a uh, is the astros one of the astros best uh relievers right now yeah he, he struggled a little bit command and you saw brian abreu get up and to uh, get loose really quick and i was like Okay, uh, we're already having trouble with command here, and you want to bring in Brian Abreu? Cool. Well, here's the thing. Um, I tell you right now, I really like Montero. Um, I know he had a shaky outing or two, but Montero to me is my MVP of the bullpen right now. I, I just he has been absolutely phenomenal. I love Rafael Montero. I love what he does on the mound. I love his electricity. Do you remember 2020? Um, um, gosh, I just totally drew a blank. Anoli Paredes, how electric he was. Do you remember when he would strike someone out? He would just go nuts and pump his fist. Like Montero is almost like that on the mound. Like when he strikes people out, he's emotional. And I like that from a relief pitcher. I like that from a back end bullpen guy. He's got the control, he's got the stuff. This Montero signing is so. Awesome. Oh, hey, get this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I make myself laugh sometimes. and I know I'm the funniest person I know, a legend in my own mind kind of thing. I saw Toro on the field when we were in BP. And I go, where the F is Toro? Totally joking. And everyone go, he's right there. <laughs> they didn't get that I was doing the where the F is Toro thing from the Justin Verlander no hitter. Mm-hmm. Like nobody caught on to it. I was like, oh, I was like, they totally missed the joke. I'm sorry. It was hilarious. Jay was with me. He's like, dude, that was funny. That was a riot. Anyways, they were like, huh? He's right there. And I pointed to him. Yeah. Anyways. Ty France sorry. is having a uh, career season, and he was the guy who had the hard hit single off of Montero, 104.8 miles per hour right. off the bat. So, yeah. And uh, I was going to bring up Paredes. Um, he's kind of got his face on the milk carton right now. Like, where are you? Ooh. Like what's going on? Um, Such I, harsh words, Eric. <laughs> Josh Good James. Um, I I don't think he's going to end up on that milk carton, but no, uh, Josh James is shoving dude right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. So he's I think he's going to be up at some point. It seems like Seth Martinez was brought up to be the kind of long reliever, but now that they're down to twenty six um, 
pitchers or players, then they, I think they just felt like they needed it, the extra lefty reliever, even though. No. Um, go ahead. Now in um in in September, doesn't that go back up to twenty eight for the playoffs? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, for September it goes up, and I think the playoffs it does as well. Um, I'm not one hundred percent sure about the rules, but yeah. But definitely for September, it does go back up, but it's no longer the 40 man roster like we remember where you can have like all these extra players on the team. And that's probably better. But overall, this was a great game. You have Stanek throwing 100 miles per hour. That's all great. But dude, you got to throw some strikes. And I mean, the bullpen overall, they still pitch good. Um, Stanek had that one walk. Then uh, Montero had that one walk. Uh, he looked a little wild, uh, a little bit erratic, but the, the the team got it done. And Odorizzi got it done. You had the – there's not much to say bad about this game. And all we can do is say, hey, we're uh, tied now with the – I think we're tied. Uh, well, it we're said, tied, yeah, yeah. No, I just looked at it. We are actually. Well, I know tied, it says second. It says second in AL West, and the Mariners are third, but we have the same record. So I'm. Well, like, it's it's because we beat them, and so we beat them. So they they say we're second, but we're tied record wise. We're both at five twenty two. We're both okay. two and a half games away from the Angels, who actually lost. And get this. So so here is here is Josh James and what and what he's doing down in um, Sugarland. Um, one of his most recent outings. Um, he came in and he gave, he gave up a couple earned runs, but before that he had gotten three, like he had gotten his third save on the twenty third, where he he struck out three batters in one inning. He's basically thrown this year. Um, he's thrown nine point one innings. He has eleven strikeouts, a whip of one ninety three, um, th- with three saves. His ERA is six seventy five. I think he's given up a couple runs here or there, but overall, Josh James lately has looked good. If you can get someone like that with that kind of speed on his pitches and get him to control it and just bring him in when you need him, um, that would be a plus. I know there's a lot of people who are sold on James who don't really have a lot of faith in him, but we've seen pitchers turn it around, and he's not Jake Odorizzi, and he's not a former All-Star but we've seen flashes of ability for him to throw that high pitch, that high high velocity pitch for a strike. Um, the bottom line is this, okay? Yeah. The Houston Astros are going to be fine. I think come mid-May, the Houston Astros are in first place. If Otani's on the IL, that's not going to be good for them because they lose a starting pitcher. Their starting pitching is already suspect, Eric. And Mike Trout cannot – lead this team by himself. He hasn't been able to do it, and that's not a judgment on him. He's crushing the ball right now. Like, dang it, he's in the MVP conversation. It's infuriating. Like, he's not even on a contender. I know they're in first place, but really, are they truly a contender? I don't think they have staying power. The Astros have staying power, and they have a higher projectability than the Angels do, hands down. All right, uh, Shoei Itani, somebody mentioned in chat that he has hit the IL. He has not hit the IL. He hit the, okay. What has happened is he ha- he suffered a minor groin injury on uh, running first base on Sunday. So he did not start in today's game. And his he pitch pinch had, hit. He pinch hit, but he okay. uh, he did not start. And his uh, start, his pitching start has been pushed back till when he's ready. Oh, so, okay. Okay. So, so he's not officially on the IL, but he's not pitching. So, so, okay. So I could, so, so thank you for correcting me on that. Cause I was wrong, but if he's not pitching, Eric, that's a huge part of Otani, right? I mean, no, I don't think you it. said IL. Somebody in the chat said okay. IL. So well, yeah, I was, I was, I had mentioned that because someone had said something about him being on the IL, but what I'm saying is he's not pitching. Okay. I mean, that's huge. I mean, you know, Hey, ha- hand it to the angels, Eric. They are, they are 15 and nine. They right. are they are playing very good baseball. They are at a plus eighteen run differential, um, but the Yankees, bro, do you see what the Yankees are doing tonight to the Blue Jays? They are um, um, cheap stealing signs. No, <laughs> no, no. the The Yankees actually. Oh wait, hold on. Did I read that wrong? The Yankees won three to two to the to the um, to the. Uh, they beat the they beat Toronto three to two. I saw something about how they had ten. Maybe they had ten hits. No, they had um, no. 
they beat them in a close game, three to two. They actually, uh, it looks like they walked it off because they are in, they are in, um, they are in Yankee Stadium. So, anyways, they are seventeen and six. The Blue Jays are fifteen and nine. The Angels are fifteen and nine. Minnesota, Eric, is fourteen Minnesota. and nine. Minnesota is Minnesota. Four, they're fourteen and nine. So here's here's what I love about baseball. It's a long season. These teams are going to have their success, but in the end, we will see who has staying power. I go with the Astros, not because I'm a homer, but because this team's built to win. This team's built for longevity, and they have veterans who know how to sustain lulls in the offense, and they find ways to win. All right, since we're not talking about the Yankees anymore, I can give you a little bit of good news. James Click has said that the Astros are hoping to have closer Ryan Presley back in the Astros uniform pretty soon. He's going to pitch at least one game with the Sugarland Skeeters. And uh, he said uh, tomorrow. So he said the main thing is to get him back fully healthy and back to the form of being an all-star closer. So he's going to pitch. Uh, the, the, I, the, the idea is for him to pitch uh, tomorrow, which is Tuesday, and they'll see how he does. And if he's ready, he could come back as soon as maybe Wednesday. And now I, I, go to that game. <laughs> I really I think that they'll probably give him two games or something. They'll see. But it depends on how desperate they are for arms. But the way that Montero, Neris, and um, – a couple other guys have pitched. I mean, there's no big rush, but yeah, Presley is a big part of this bullpen. And you know what? Y'all are a big part of this podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast. You'll first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe to us on the on the YouTube and make sure you go ahead and listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to the Locked On Astros podcast. And if I said Skeeters, I apologize. It's the Space Cowboys. So we'll be back with another edition of the Locked On Astros podcast and Ghost Rose. <laughs>